family, welcome back. Brand new day, brand new video. I hope everyone is doing okay. I want to send you my love, my gratitude, my best wishes for um, the month ahead, October 2020. And of course, for everything that we've gone through and we will go through. I want to take a few minutes to talk about the month of October, of course, as a kind of an energetic forecast. And I also want to discuss two themes, motifs that have been quite important during this period, namely uh, the transformation of the ego. So I'm going to elaborate on that. I've covered it a bit in the previous videos and so on. Um, and the second one is what we'll call the, the expansive life energy, some kind of insight knowledge that I got um, abstract in the, in the last couple of weeks. So to start, we have a full moon on the 1st of October. Uh, we have another new moon, if, uh, if, it, if it's correct, it's on the 16th of October. Um, I'm not going to dwell on these things, but there is a very transformative energy in the month of October. It's setting the stage for November and December 2020, December 21st being the winter solstice and the most important date that we've been looking at since uh, December 21st, 2012. So it's a cycle of eight years. Uh, completion and the official entrance into the age of Aquarius. You can Google more of that online, of course. I'm not going to dive into that. Uh, if somebody else can do it better. Um, we have, you know, astrologically, there are a few dates that are important in the month of October. Energetically, which is my concentration, at least on this channel, um, we, we do have an opportunity to transform ourselves. So, of course, it begins with choice. As a wise man once said, you can, you can, you have two paths in life that you can choose. You can choose the natural evolution, where you may choose to evolve as a species and a human being in a consciousness over the span of hundreds of thousands of years. Or you can choose to evolve quickly, which means that it can take a year or two. It may sound ludicrous, but it is not. That's the whole um, setting up the game of, you know, the ascension and the fifth dimension and all of these things that we're talking about. Um, that's exactly what it is. Being aware of the simulation, being aware of your role in it, being aware of the different levels. So at this time, heading into the new year 2021, with everything that's going on, you have two choices. You can evolve gradually with the rest of humanity through your own ego and choosing, you know, to deal with the themes at a slower pace, or you can choose to be aware of the themes at hand and of course tackle them at all before they, you know, it's basically the, the, the differentiation between reactive and proactive. So the two things I believe are that are apparent during this time is first of all, the transformation of the ego. The ego has served us as a watchdog for all of our lives, previous lifetimes as well. It functions on automatic pilot, it basically reflects our core beliefs and our mindset. Where we are hurt, it seeks to protect us. That protection has gone to a place of uh, self-destruction at the moment because it prevents us from growth. It prevents us from feeling discomfort, which leads to growth, which leads to happiness eventually. And it basically uh, acts as a self-fulfilling prophecy in terms of I told you so. So if you're afraid to do something, energetically, unknowing, unbeknownst to you, you will create the stage so that things don't work out in a very positive or fruitful manner. And the ego can say, I told you so, I was trying to, trying to protect you. Therefore, perpetuating its role. The place where we are today, we have to, as we are transforming, transform the ego as well. We have to be at peace with it. So there has to be an evolution towards a place of harmony. So this is an exercise in mindfulness. It's understanding how the ego manifests within yourself, the role that it plays within your, you know, energetic behavior, daily, monthly, yearly, and stopping it there. The transformation will be to a place where the ego doesn't have to, you know, if you, if you get a watchdog over your house, and it's very reactive to everything in the environment in order to protect from potential threats that most of the time turn out not to be threats. It will behave in a certain way. We're trying to calm that watchdog down and let him know that we're going to share the burden now. So it doesn't have to overreact all the time. And it has to take a more passive role. So therefore, it doesn't come and react in the same way that it would. The work to be done this month is to highlight the specific issues where our ego is omnipresent, where it's always there. Is it family? Is it health? Is it 
finances, where does it always come and do the I told you so thing? Okay. For example, um, an example from childhood, let's say you have a core belief and your parents tell you regarding two or three topics that it can't, it can be done, you can't do it and so on. That becomes a core belief with age. You have this idea that if you do so, you will fail and you will get hurt, perpetuated by your parents. All of this is related to a, life, a lifetime long ago. It's just replaying itself out to be corrected if you want to evolve quickly and not slowly. And whatever you try, eventually, because you've set up the energetic climate, it doesn't work. And the reason why is not because it can't work, is because of A, your core belief, and your ego just playing its role. So that's the first component, okay? It's just asking the ego to take a step back, working on a higher level on the element of faith and co cooperation with the universe, uh, this is the year to take full um, hold and grasp of your abilities. And I'm not talking about telekinesis and telepathy. These are very secondary things. But, you know, if you have a financial problem today because of what's happening in the world or family problems, the understanding is very simple. There is a singular path in life in any given situation. So if I'm in a situation today and I'm, it looks like I'm going to feel and there's stress and it's not, that's the old way of thinking. If I understand that I'm in a position today and at the moment I don't have any solutions to get myself out of that position, but I do understand that in any given moment, I am A, exactly where I'm supposed to be, and B, there is one singular solution that is aligned with my sole purpose. All I need to do is to focus on that and find it. That's it. So don't be in a state of negativity and self-denial, self-cancellation of, I can't do this. Be in a state of, there is a singular possibility and it is my job to focus on it. I will sit within, I will ask my guidance as many times as I need to align myself. Therefore, things are not bad. They are just misaligned. The minute you align yourself, things are full. Okay, that's the understanding that makes the ego sit and say, Sit in the corner, relax, it's all good. You've played your role. At this point, if I don't try things, if I don't do things, if I'm not in a state of discomfort, I will not grow, I will not evolve. So I need you to just chill out for a second, put a pin in it and relax. Okay, that's the ego. The second part, reading a bit about, um, expanding my knowledge slowly about Ayurveda and, and mindsets from those years, a long time ago in India, um, the insight that I got was that we come into this life, uh, we were talking, I was talking with someone about lifespan, about lifespan in third dimension, lifespan in the fifth dimension, the way that we're programmed to believe we're supposed to live eight years and so on. So what I want to focus on is the finite amount of life energy and how to allocate it. So the first component we said ego, transformation of ego, I covered that. For the month of October, these are two tools. You can do with them whatever you want. You can do nothing. But I suggest you try to look at how you can apply them to your life, the understanding rather, and improve your situation so you can align yourself with your sole purpose and the universe where it wants us to head in 2021, which is a very, 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 very important year. We come into this life, we're born out of a mother or father, uh, we grew up in a family, sometimes not. And we have been programmed a certain way in order to allocate our energy, our psychological energy, our spiritual and our physical energy. Okay, so it's mind, spirit and body. The allocation of this energy is usually done along the guise of, you know, exercising, sports, all these things, a lot of activity, not a lot of sitting within. So if you think of yourself coming into this life, the universe gives you energy 1 to 100. That's it. If you allocate that properly, your lifespan can be 200 years, your lifespan can be 50 years. If you choose to live very fast, very quickly, it's 50 years. If you choose to live slowly and allocate more to your spiritual pursuits and inward and not psychological and physical things, you live longer. That's the, great, the greater idea of things. The allocation of energy. 
If you look, and I'm, I'm saying this for a purpose, which I'll get to in a second. If you look at species of mammals on the planet, and animals that generally move slower, lower heartbeats, more relaxation, um, sleeping more, they live longer. They live longer than us. And if you look at animal species that are very fast moving, uh, very nervous. So if you think of a hamster or a chinchilla, these kinds of animals, their heart beats very fast. They don't live very long. Okay. So there is that difference and there is also the mindset. So to understand that my life energy is finite, but I can choose how to allocate it. It's the fast versus the slow. We live very fast today. It's not the way it was intended at all. We're more, I think, geared to be an agrarian society, a spiritual agrarian society like in the days of the Maria. That was the intention of Source. The whole job, rat racing, 15 espressos per day, running left, running this, are things that don't matter. If there's a cataclysmic event tomorrow and the economy is neutralized, and I don't know, we were invaded by beings from another planet. What does it matter from a business development manager or vice president of, you know, whatever, my left foot. Um, it doesn't matter at all, but that's the way we live today. So the whole job and college achievement, success are elements that suck our life energy straight up and they burn it out. If we try to evolve ourselves, we try to meditate, we try to relax, we breathe, we eat properly. We don't burn out the body through sugar and caffeine and all these things, we extend. So these are the two things I believe are important in, in terms of motifs for the month of October, but also November, all the way to December 21st. Transformation of the ego. How to transform your ego so that it no longer hinders you from discomfort and from growth um, by way of faith. If you believe you don't need the ego, the greatest wound and the greatest hurdle that we all have is our faith in the universe. That's it. If we don't believe, we incur fear. A person that believes doesn't have fear. It doesn't exist. Um, and the second one, of course, is the proper management of our life energy beyond this point. Maybe I understand it's a pain in the ass for this pandemic, for many people not to be in the office. And, you know, for one thing that pains painful, for example, is the restaurant industry. People that work really hard with food to try to make people happy, they took a real hit. Okay, yes. Um, in the long term, maybe this whole culture of getting out of your home to go to an office building and endure the shit commute wherever you are and sit in that office with bad ventilation and no windows, maybe that's just a bad idea from the, from the get-go, even if it made the certain individuals tons of money. Maybe the whole office thing doesn't work. Maybe the whole business thing doesn't work, the whole stock market and, you know, all of these things. People speculating on air and making fortunes while other people don't have money to eat. So all of this allocation of energy to this fast-paced, materialistic, burnout lifestyle, my understanding is what one of the elements of this, you know, um, crisis that we're having right now is trying to awaken in us. And it can take a toll on us financially, Psychologically, because some people are only geared to do that. They, they never thought of doing it any other way. So to live a longer, healthier life, slow is better. The running, there is no point. Where are you running and why are you running? Is it about money? There are a million ways to make a passive income, to be able to grow as a human being without money being the main thing. It still is, and that's the sad part. If you break down any politics, anything, it boils down to that one element. The choice is, do you want it to let it run your life or do you want to have it as an extra commodity that plugs into your abundance somehow? That's the differentiation that you're here to make. Okay. Um, and that's a choice. So we are in an uncertain period of our, our, our history. Sure. There's never been another period like this because we never had the internet. We're never globalized. Things have changed. In the month of October, with the passage of Mars and, and all these aspects that have to do with the difficulty of Mars, um, perhaps we will see some more difficulties in the world around. But it's not for us to sit and to, you know, to, to wait to see how we're going to react, how the world is going to react. It's to position ourselves, get rid of our ego. That's the ego thing, the ego part of it. 
and align ourselves with where we're supposed to be. Okay, and to figure out essentially what it is that we want out of the rest, it should be a, you know, how you have the Jesus Christ thing, uh, BC and AD. So this is before COVID and after COVID. How do you want to position your life and position yourself in the world from now on? Now that a lot of things have changed. Maybe you leave the city, you move to the countryside, maybe you flourish more in nature because it's more important than having a big house and 25 things you don't use in it. Okay, that's a transformation, bringing us back to our roots, to the essential. If you look at wise sage, uh, wise men, sages, um, any kind of practitioner of ancient knowledge, male, female, uh, throughout their history, they always live by themselves, in, immersed in nature, somewhere. That's usually hard to find as well. Now, that's a bit dramatic and, you know, it fits well in movies and so on. But there is a point there. There is the, uh, the corruption of society. The way that money and the desire, the, the desire nature of uh, humans corrupts us, whether we like it or not. And the... The way to step out of that is to step back into the purity of simplicity of having perhaps a house surrounded by trees and you know ends meet are a secondary thing and the personal development is a primary thing and if we see i can't you know i work with many clients where a lot of people are talking about relocation these days it's expensive to live in the city there's stress there is expectation there is pressure but you don't have to live there you can live anywhere Especially if you find a way to work online, then you can literally live anywhere. So uh, this is an exciting month. If you look at the energy of Mars, it's also pushing you forward. It's asking you to make changes. It's asking you to, uh, it's asking you to dream of possibilities that you have turned off because you were trying to be an adult. There's no such thing. An adult is a grown child with responsibilities. But there's a lot of misery and happiness with that. So we need to redefine that word as well. You can call it a kid out. There's a movie called Kid Outhood. Um, food for thought. You have opportunities. Again, you can choose two paths. You can choose to move quickly and efficiently, or you can choose to sit and react, and it will take the time it will take. But then you don't necessarily get the luxury of complaining or anything anymore. Okay? Um, I'll invite you to check out the website, Indigo Like Love. Subscribe to the channel, get the little bell thing in notifications. Um, you can check out the Instagram at Indigo Like 2222. Send me an email, Indigo Like 2222 at gmail.com for any questions, anything. Support us on Patreon as co creators or through PayPal as a one time donation. Uh, it does help us a lot if you want to know the truth, especially during this period. And I have a big surprise that's coming up, a uh, couple. But over the next couple of months, I have something in the works for the next few weeks as well. So I'm going to be sharing that very soon. In the meantime, I send you all my love and I'll see you during the next video.